All right. I'm Scott Wood. You're listening to The Interview Show. We are in the tour van of Shushu. I'm sitting here with Jamie Stewart. He is wearing... Nice. Nail polish to match his shirt. I would love it. Since we're in the tour van, if you could pick one object that's bizarre and talk a little bit about it. Um, there's a tiny jar of f- fudge in the shape of teddy bears under the back seat that my friend Camilla made. They're unbelievably good. I'll give you one after we're done. Aww. That's my first gift ever from an interview. <laughs> okay, you deserve it. Oh, thanks. Welcome back to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You've just heard Shoo Shoo and the song Hi. I'm sitting here with Jamie. He's the mastermind behind the band. I would love it if you could tell me a little bit about that track. Uh, it was uh, initially inspired by a, a young woman that I got to know over email who's interested in the band. And um, kind of over the over the course of us getting to know each other, she began to reveal some uh, really private parts about her life and really difficult and extraordinarily difficult things that she had gone gone through. And the uh, the song is for me is an uh, an attempt to um, I guess give a nod to the fact that it is possible to to try to find some sort of community and the kind of tragic mess that you know everybody's life is at, at one point or another. Um, 
Uh, yep. All right. Welcome to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host. Today I'm sitting with the evil mastermind behind Shoo Shoo, Jamie Stewart. Hi, Jamie. Ahoy, ahoy, ahoy. How's it going today? Hanging in there. How are you? Hanging in there? Oh, phone call. <laughs> Pretty good, yeah. All right, so Always is your current record. That was my first Shoo Shoo record. So as a fan who's new to Shoo Shoo, they might feel like they've gone down the rabbit hole into your mind. I was hoping that you could give me and other people who are just getting turned on to you now a little bit of a roadmap to where we are. Um, well, I could tell you chronologically. Uh, <laughs> it's our eighth eighth record. Uh, we've been around since 2002. It's I'm probably the worst person in the entire world to ask that question of. I don't really feel any sort of objective separation from it. Some people have said, or so I have read, uh, that uh, this record is feels kind of like probably actually a good record to start off listening to. It seems to be kind of a culmination of things that we have done, according to other people. Uh, and then it's also uh, relatively, it's, it is as relatively approachable as it is uh, experimental, according to some things that I have read. So um, apparently we have um, hit a complete dead end and have no new ideas. <laughs> uh, um, I This is going to make me sound like a complete moron, but I, I don't really think of the records as being particularly separate from all... I think I just sort of think of Shushu as having a collection of songs and there happen to be records, but I don't really... I mean, I don't listen to the records when they're done, you know, but I just, I, you know, play the songs, you know, live on tour six months a year. So, I'm, you know, I'm playing songs from 10 years ago and songs from now, so, and they don't feel particularly uh, separate from each other. Um, or, the, or, you know, it, it doesn't... I don't, When I play a song from 10 years ago, um, it doesn't feel... I mean, the feelings don't feel like they're from 10 years ago. There are some songs that are from 10 years ago that are now emotionally totally irrelevant, so we just don't play those songs. Um, but, it, you know, I mean, any, any song that I have a regular relationship with, uh, it's, it's because it still has some, uh, some, some resonance, and I think because of that, I'd, it's a little bit difficult for me to compartmentalize them. Fair enough. I'm going to play devil's advocate again. Some of these songs <laughs> on this record always refer to other songs, so there is a little bit of self-referentialism going on there, right? Uh, yeah, two songs. Are, one one is a, uh, I, I, one is a, a, a postscript to a song on our third record, Fabulous Muscles. Uh, that song being Clown Town, and the song on Always is called Beauty Town. And the song is about looking back at how time has changed the people who the song Clown Town is about. In most cases, uh, not for the better. And then the other song is uh, on Always is called. Uh, Black Drum Machine, and on our sixth record, Women as Lovers, it's called uh, the song that it refers to, is related to is called Black Black Keyboard. That's not not so much a postscript. One is a it's about how two different people have dealt with the same set of events. So um, the songs are related to each other, but one is not really referring to the other one, as in the case of Clown Town and Beauty Town. It's kind of cool that you're getting to the point where Shoo Shoo is like a tapestry that can refer back to itself. That's a very nice way of putting it. Thanks. Little Chisel, little sweetest glob, the restrictions is gone, the worries is gone. Time is right, I'll love you like I should. When the time is right, come back, come back, come back. The rose elf is stabbing. The rose goblin is vacuumed. O U T out. When I look in my eyes, I see death. It's great, I love abortion. You are too good for this life. When I look in my eyes, I see death. It's rad, I love abortion. A hyena infected with rabies would have given birth to you. There are too many important things that I can't be for you.
dream. Let all you have lived be as a dream. Let all you have lived be as a dream. All right, welcome back to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You've just heard I Love Abortion by Shu Shu. I've got Jamie from the band here with me. I would love it if you could tell me a little bit about that track. That one is actually, a, 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 again, coming from somebody who I got to know uh, through through the band over email and, and a different person who wrote in. And um, uh, Initially, when we got to, know her, got to know each other, she was telling me a lot about a period in her life when she was going through cutting herself a whole lot. And she actually ended up sending me the knife that she would use a lot, which sits on my mixing desk. Uh, but she, uh, uh, was very young. She's maybe like 18 years old and she ended up getting pregnant and was, you know, knew that she was way, way too young to be the kind of mom that she wanted to be, uh, and realized that she needed to get an abortion, but still felt a real kind of uh, very sweet affection for the, you know, future baby that never really existed. And h- half of the song is, is about uh, things that she had told me that she was feeling, um, you know, and it's a, a a song of admiration for her kind of basically having an abortion out of love, like realizing that she could not give this particular child what it really, really needed. Um, and the other half is, uh, can I use the F word on your show? Sparingly. Um, the other half of the song is to, uh, just say the, the F word you as loud as possible to the to the uh, right wing in America, it tends to be extraordinarily aggressive uh, and uh, against abortion uh, or in its actions against abortion. You know, going as far as you know, murdering people, and the left wing tends to be really flabby about it. Uh, so it's an attempt to be as aggressively p- pro-choice as the right wing tends to be uh, anti-choice. I, I wanted to avoid it because it's kind of cliche, but especially you must have very, very, very intense fans. Um, I would bristle a little bit at the use of the word fan um just because it you know creates sort of a distance between people um some people who seem to be interested in the band it it seems to really be the right band for them in in a lot of ways and i you know really appreciate the opportunity to get to be part of that all right so shoo shoo you've gone through so many band lineups over the years given the nature of the songs i was hoping you could talk a little bit about the audition process um there actually there has only been one audition um which took place a couple of weeks ago um otherwise it's always been people that i've just been friends with and uh knew that it was going to work because i'd seen them in other bands in the case of the one audition that that ever took place uh i just asked i suppose i asked the person if they had any difficult difficulty playing uh you know songs that were about uh you know abortion and incest and hating the military and they said no and then uh, we did some improvising together, and then I saw if she had good time, and she does, and um, she has a sense of humor and has a lot of experiences played with one of my favorite artists, Dina Parkin, so she has her act together. Um, yeah, o- otherwise it's just been people I had personal relationships with, and the band in a couple of cases has completely soured those personal relationships. <laughs> but in other cases, it's made them uh, quite, a, quite a bit stronger. Cool. So... I sort of liken it to an analogy of being friends with someone and then being a roommate with somebody. It changes that dynamic. So I'm hoping you can talk a little bit more about that. Well, in the case of uh, Angela Saw, who's touring right now and has did, uh, and it's done actually most of the touring in the last couple of years, it, in a very, very positive way, showed me a side of her that I didn't know that she had. Uh, I mean, I knew that she was very bright and, and a good player, but I didn't know that she was incredibly tenacious and I didn't know or how tenacious she was uh, in, in terms of learning some of the parts a lot of which especially on the keyboards are real difficult um, and I didn't know that musically she was as aggressive as she is and because of that she's really notched that up in my playing I've found that I've really had to push myself a lot harder to keep up with her so uh, because of that it's you know my admiration for her has grown and you know when you admire someone you tend to want to become closer to them or fawn over them more and then they like you more because they think that you like them so. Nice, nice. Okay, so you've been doing this for 10 years now, and I was reading that when you started out the band, you created a manifesto, so I was hoping you could give me a little bit of the manifesto. Um, it's not as exciting as that. Uh, we we very formally decided what we wanted our influences to be, and uh, it's it's grown since then, but for the first several years, we really tried to stand in particular parameters, um, those being uh, kind of 70s and 80s British post-punk, noise and experimental music, uh, modern classical, 
uh, kind of like gay dance floor music and um, uh, different Asian percussion musics. Uh, and the other aspect of it that has not changed and I think will not change in the course of the band is that we w decided we would always write about songs that were about uh, real events in our lives or in our family's lives or our friends' lives or about politics. But none of the songs are or fictional. That we the the point of the band was to always, as honestly as we could, write about uh, real events. And that's, I think, part of the power of Shoo Shoo, definitely. I wanted to come at it this way. Like, a lot of times bands are like unstable molecules. And I was reading, when you were talking about the manifesto, you said it was a way to give the band purpose and keep it together. And I thought that was cute and cool at the same time. <laughs> that's nice of you to say. Um, well, considering the vast number of lineup changes, I don't know how successful it's been. <laughs> But as an entity, I guess it has persisted. <laughs> ja, ja, ja. <laughs> you have tried. You are ripped up. But nothing has changed. Listening to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You've just heard. You want to do honeysuckle? Yeah, please. You've just heard honeysuckle by Shu Shu. I've got Jamie here with me. We're sitting in his tour van right now. I would love it, Jamie, if you could tell me a little bit about that track. Uh, Angela saw wrote that song, and it's the the first song she ever wrote. And I think uh, she did a really great job on it. Very impressed. It is, uh, you know, I think one of the the poppiest songs that we have ever done, and uh, that really reflects her listening taste. She's basically in, into kind of top 40 hip-hop um, and uh, top 40 dance music. But at the same time, she's going through an incredibly kind of bleak and uncertain period in her life and is realizing that she's developing a real uh, nihilistic attitude and, and, and streak. 
um, in her in her outlook. Uh, so that's essentially what the lyrics are about. Um, her feelings of really specific uh, hopelessness, but at the same time, her listening habits are, you know, about as bouncy as they could possibly be. So uh, it's a it, uh, at at this moment a real reflection of of where she's at, uh, both aesthetically and emotionally. <laughs> ja, ja, ja. <laughs> All right. I'm Scott Wood. You're listening to The Interview Show. We are right now in the tour van of Shu Shu. I'm with Jamie Stewart, and this is the nicest smelling tour van I've ever been in. Oh, thanks. Thanks very, very much. So what am I smelling? Um, a, uh, <laughs> a, very, <laughs> a very fruity mixture of uh, cinnamon and lavender. <laughs> here, they're right here. I'll clink the little bottles together so you can hear them. Holy smokes. Wow. Yeah. You know, I've toured a lot, and a smelly tour van makes you want to kill yourself. But a really nice smelling tour van makes you feel as if your life is not completely meaningless and stupid. I've been in a lot of tour vans, and I've had a lot of bad odors, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I was talking about Shushu with some friends, and uh, all of these musicians that I was talking to wanted me to ask you this question. When making music that most people might consider strange, how do you evaluate if what you just did is innovative or just weird for weird's sake. Oh, uh, I think I never think about it. Um, I mean, at at the risk of being self-aggrandizing, I don't. I mean, I don't purposely do anything weird for weird's sake. I'm not saying that anything. I'm not saying that nothing we do is weird, or it could be perceived that way. But I mean, the motivation is certainly never to. I mean, I'm not trying to just be a kook you know for the point of being a kook not denying that i am a kook but uh i mean that's that's one of the things i really love the most about music is when it's working it generally is intuitive um i mean completely separate from literature where you have to you know unless it's not going to make any sense whatsoever you have to really intellectualize exactly what you're doing but music is almost entirely a combination of physicality and emotionality um when it's when it's successful uh or at least for me um a really great part about it is not thinking about it or trying as hard as you can not to think about it and just letting it be itself and get out of the way of of uh of the muse as it were all right jamie from shushu i've really appreciated having this chance to talk with you at the end of the show i love the guest to pick one of their tracks and talk a little bit about it as i bring it up um i would choose uh I'm trying to remember what the hell's on there. How about Joey's song? Sounds great. I'd love it if you could tell me a bit about that track as I bring it out. <laughs> I'm really tempted to make you say it again. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, this song was about my uh, my younger brother uh, at a time when he was uh, his basically his his family was falling apart, uh, and he and I are very very close and. Um, uh, had had kind of a difficult upbringing, so even though now he's a total adult and a dad and has been very, very successful at his job, I still feel really protective towards him, uh, which is preposterous. During during two thousand sorry during two thousand eleven, we did a tour of of uh, Eastern Europe, and our uh, tour manager was really incredibly into crowd rock, which somehow I had never listened to very much before. I don't know how, um, and it really the bands he was playing really. Uh, opened my ears up to a lot of things that I hadn't heard before and a lot of musical ideas I hadn't thought of before. There are bands like La Dusseldorf and Cluster and uh, Harmonia. So um, the drum beat is like lifted right off of a La Dusseldorf song um, and the kind of synth sounds and kind of harmonies of the of the song uh, have, have a lot to do with that. That genre is a real direct, direct nod towards kind of the 70s kind of dance-oriented or beat-oriented crowd rock. Can I ask how your brother reacts when he hears songs that you've written about him? This one made him real sad, he said, but he liked it musically. I mean, he appreciated that I had had had, uh, had written it. And kind of, he's he's his his life and my life are real intertwined in the band. He's done the design for the band for almost the whole time we've done it. He's designed almost all our stuff, and he's my only family member that I really feel comfortable uh, playing stuff for. And um, he's he's another person who you know, if I need to ask whether or not something is seeming real, that I trust his opinion. All right, Jamie, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Good to talk to you. Oh, you want some fudgy berries? I'll take one if you really want to give one to me, oh, but yeah. I mean... Well, you know, I mean, I can, I can be the first. Joey, Joey, 